Hi, it's author Ellie Alexander and I am coming to you with another Five Things Friday. That's right, it's Friday and it's a three-day weekend. Thanks to a reader suggestion, this week we are going to take on five hours in my writing life. Are you thinking that it's champagne and bonbons and super glamorous? Stay tuned and find out. That's right everyone, it's another Friday and here in beautiful Ashland, Oregon, it is raining. I know that I talk about the fact that it doesn't rain very often in Southern Oregon, but sometimes it does. I'm so excited to share what a typical day in my writing life looks like. And spoiler alert, it is not glamorous. <laughs> so let's get right to it. Number one, the first thing I start out every day with is a walk. I get outside, rain or shine, usually shine, sometimes snow and ice. No matter the weather, I get outside and I start every morning, my first hour of every morning, with a walk. It does a lot of things. One, it gets my blood pumping, it's good exercise, but I also feel like it's great for my writing because my creative energy starts to build throughout the day and I'm walking in beautiful places like here in Lithia Park. All right, so it's raining. Let's grab the dog and do this. Someone else gets really excited about our daily walks. Let's go. We just finished a modified loop up through Lithia and back down through one of our favorite neighborhoods here in Ashland. And in true Ashland fashion, I cut our longer walk short because it was raining and now you can see just like half an hour, 45 minutes later, the skies are clearing, blue and sun are peeking through the clouds. And now I'm up above the Calle. Tor sits right down here on the corner. And Jules walks along Ashland Creek on the cobblestone path of the Calle to her apartment right above Elevation. It's so fun as a writer of fiction to get to weave these real places into the series. They are definitely my inspiration and my muse when I'm working on any of the Bake Shop mysteries. So Jules lives right upstairs above um, what really is Mountain Provisions, but of course, if you've read the Bake Shop Mysteries, it's Elevation. And the only problem with writing about a real place in my fiction is at the end of every walk, I always think in my head like, I should just pop down to Tort and get one of Andy's coffees. I could pop into Huck's, also known in the real world as Oberon's, and have a turkey leg and a cocktail with Lance. Don't you just want to pop into Tort? Down the entrance to the new basement digs and get one of Helen's delicious pastry or head upstairs and see what Andy's creating behind the bar? I'm back from my daily loop and as always, Getting to walk up in the mountains or here in the plaza where Tort would sit is always so inspiring. Now I can't wait to get home and start what's next in my day. As you can see, I am back from my morning walk and I am so eager to get started on my actual writing. But first, I need step two of every day, which, drum roll please, involves none other than 
coffee, 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 coffee. The second thing I do when I get back from my morning walk is I make myself a latte. Now, here's something that might actually be a shocker. My red coffee canister denotes the fact that this is decaf. I'm actually predominantly a decaf drinker, mainly because caffeine makes me shaky and crazy, but I love the smell and the flavor and the ritual of coffee. And of course, I have to be drinking a latte when I'm writing the Bake Shop Mysteries to really center myself into Jules' head and the space of tort. But I do it without the caffeine. If you, like me, are not a huge fan of caffeine, I am getting ready to introduce a decaf line of tort coffees. I know that's been a request from a lot of you, so they're coming. And I'm making one right now. I've always loved the ritual of coffee. There's just something so sensory about it. Um, and as I'm sure you can tell, I am not a professional barista, but I do love using my home machine because it saves me so much money. And I feel like I just get to be closer to Jules and Andy and the entire crew at Tort when I'm making my home coffee. And every writer needs something warm next to his or her desk when they're writing. Are you, are you right? Are you with me? Are you with me? Here we go, this is my favorite part. Look at that espresso, it's so beautiful. I really don't start any writing without a cup of coffee. You can ask my husband, although he's constantly teasing me about the fact that I drink decaf. Jules would not be impressed, nor would Andy. I think um, one of the baristas who I talked to early on in the process of doing research for this book said that um, people who drink decaf have a special place in hell. <laughs> Fine, bring it on, that's okay. I still love that aroma and the process and how beautiful it is. I have to wait for a second for the milk to steam, which is the hardest part. Um, but this is the quickest part of the rest of my writer's day. So I should just savor it. I have writer friends who write in the evening and like open up a bottle of wine or pour themselves some kind of fancy cocktail. I could never write um, and drink at the same time. Java, that's like my limit. Java and water, that's as far as I go. And now for the steaming. Every time I do this step, I imagine Andy standing behind the espresso bar at Tort steaming and chatting up the customers. So really it's proof that I have to do this for my research. Is Andy not the cutest character? I know I had talked about him last week, but he's just one of my favorite characters to write because he's so earnest and genuine, um, but has this sense of sophistication when it comes to the coffee world too. It's been really fun to develop him as the series has gone on. I'm not sure he would approve of my filming skills though. <laughs> You're getting a real life look. <laughs> I test it by touching the bottom, which is probably something Jules would say, don't do. It's almost there. All right, on to the last and final step of the second part of my day, which is building the latte. Pouring the milk in. I mean, it is such an act of love. I am working on a flashback book right now and I've been researching coffee from the 1980s and it's amazing how much coffee has evolved. In the 1980s, you would never make a latte like this. It'd be a dark shot of espresso, a little bit of milk, and then like inches and inches of foam. And I think it's so funny because if you went to a coffee shop today and asked for this much foam, or the barista gave you that much foam, you'd be like, what is this? <laughs> coffee, it's a culture. Okay, finish it off. Okay, I have had my morning walk. That was step one. Step two, I have made myself a homemade decaf latte. It smells delicious. It's gonna warm my hands. Let's go find out what step three in my very sophisticated writer's day looks like. All right, 
Now we are on to number three, the third step in a day of my writing life. This is by far the biggest chunk of every day, and that is word count right here at my desk. I have my latte in hand, so I will be fueled, whether it's unleaded or not, I still will have something delicious to be drinking. Um, when I'm writing, as you'll note, I am rarely in like fancy clothes. I don't usually wear dresses or shoes when I write. I don't wear jewelry when I write. I don't wear earrings or my wedding rings when I write. Not to sound too monkish, but I hate the feeling of like my ring hitting on the keyboard when I'm typing or like my earrings moving against my hair. Um, I always have multiple chapsticks at the ready because I don't know why I'm constantly using chapsticks when I write. I like candles. I have a Jules playlist or a Sloan playlist, whatever book I'm working on, and I really set the mood. The really interesting thing for me is my word count usually runs somewhere from about like 9, 9.30 in the morning until two o'clock. I will spend that whole chunk of time working on whatever book I'm writing at the moment. And I don't do anything else. I'll get up, I'll get a glass of water, I'll stretch, I'll do some yoga, I'll move around a little bit, but otherwise I am in my writing space. And I was speaking to a book club earlier this week and I had this kind of aha moment about why that is. By two o'clock, I am always done. And I think it stems from the fact that when I first started writing, my son was in elementary school. And so I would drop him off at school and come back and get to work right away writing. And I had to be done by two o'clock to go pick him up from school. And for whatever reason, that ritual and routine has stuck with me. So for the next five to six hours, you're gonna find me right here working on book 11 at the moment of The Big Shop Mysteries. Number four. Whew, my word count is finished for the day and now I can have fun connecting with you on social media. I love getting to use social media, all my various platforms to connect with readers. It's been one of the greatest treasures and surprises actually of my writing career thus far. The only thing is it is a major distraction. So if you don't hear from me for a few hours, know that that's because I'm working on my word count. I do not give myself permission to chat and engage on social media or get sucked down the beautiful rabbit hole that is pastry chefs and all those gorgeous images that I can get sucked into on Instagram of cakes and beautiful pastries and everything I would imagine, jewels, baking at torte, or craft beer and gorgeous photos of the outside, whatever book I'm working on, I can totally get sucked down a rabbit hole. So I don't do any social media until I am done with my word count for the day. One of the challenging things, probably the most challenging for me in terms of social media as an author is making sure that I'm sharing authentic content with you. And I always try to share pieces of my research, my real world research, but my page can't really look like maybe a pastry chef's or a craft brewer or somebody who's only taking gorgeous photos of the Pacific Northwest landscapes because I write about so many different things. So sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm a bit scattered. Some of the things that I write about cross paths and some of them are kind of divergent, whether it's flowers or beer or baking. Um, so it's always a challenge to me to make sure that I'm sharing things that are real and interesting to you as readers and to me as a writer. Um, and then how I tie it all together. I don't know. I'm still figuring that out. So if you have great suggestions for me, throw them my way. Number five, this is the last part of my day before I still go to pick up my kiddo who's now sob in high school and spend the evening with my family at the end of my work day. And that is shooting videos like this and taking photos of my books or something delicious that I've baked that I want to share with you. And I have to tell you, peeling back the curtain, it's a lot of work. I had no idea how much work goes into setting up lighting and a camera. Um, I don't usually write with a camera in my face because you would not want to see me talking to myself and pulling out my hair and scratching things on paper. Um, but I did think it would be fun to show you that usually the last thing that I'll do at the end of my day after I've finished connecting with you on social media 
is actually filming videos and they take probably hours. I had no idea when we first started doing this that they would, I thought maybe, you know, it'd be like five minutes. You shoot a quick video and you're done, but not so much. We stage it, we shoot it, my husband edits it, sets it to music, adds some fun graphics, and then finally uploads it to share with you. I hope you have enjoyed these five hours in my writing life. It's actually five hours plus a big chunk of that time for word count in the middle of the day. Hopefully you will have realized that it's not very glamorous. I am writing in my cozy cabin socks in a warm turtleneck with a latte in my office by myself most of the day. Um, but despite the fact that it's not champagne and roses, I love getting to write and share my books with you. So as always, please be sure to subscribe to my page and click the bell to get notified whenever I share new videos. I hope you have a wonderful three-day weekend and have stacks of books to read.